Jordan's bank the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. Then cleansed be every life from sin, make straight the Colossians 3.15 says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Eternal, Eternal God, God, you offer, offer rest, rest for our hearts, hearts and peace for our souls. Give us grace to seek peace in our lives, peace in this community, and peace, and peace in this in world. world. Through For Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the Prince, Prince of, of peace. peace. Amen. Yes, all the land and sea today The joyful message brings The birth of Him, our Lord and Christ Our Savior and the Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship here at Redeemer Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning, December 6th, the year of our Lord, 2020. Advent 2, second Sunday, the Sunday of peace. Last week, hope through Christ. Today, peace through Christ. Isaiah chapter 40 unpacks this wonderful comfort that we have through Jesus. Welcome again. I'm Pastor Steve Ferber. It's great to have all of you here today. I want to give a special welcome to our Director of Worship, Dan Oy, his wife, Cheryl, the beautiful music they have uh, provided for us for years, continue to do on our uh, video worship. Behind our cameras, Dan Past, our videographer, and Bob Past, our sound tech. Great to have you here uh, in the middle of this pandemic. There is peace. It's the middle of the storm. There's peace because Jesus is with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Opportunities here for you to connect at Redeemer Lutheran Church. We started last Wednesday a three-video session called The Purpose of Christmas. You don't have to have done the first one to join us this coming Wednesday, December 9th, 
And then on Wednesday, December 16th as well, 7 p.m., we even had somebody uh, zooming in from Boston the other night. So it was a wonderful time led by Gordy Engel. Also on Saturday mornings, Gordy leads a men's Bible study. That'll be at 7.30 a.m., once again, Zoom. I'm beginning our EDIBS, Electronic Daily Intensive Bible Study, through the teachings of Pastor Paul Stark. Very excited. That will start this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, and uh, again, that is a Zoom Bible study. Every Monday night, 8 p.m., we talk to God. From 8 to 8.30, He listens because Jesus died and rose for us. A couple of special announcements. Christmas Eve, we will be having in-seat worship at 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Christmas morning, 10 a.m. service. Also, we are providing a video Christmas Eve worship service as well. For those of you who just feel more comfortable uh, worshiping from the comfort of your home. Thank you for those who are continuing to give toward our waterfall renewal, uh, our stained glass windows, and our um, live streaming projects. Thank you. Uh, the finances are coming in. We appreciate it very much. We're committed to these, not simply to do them, but so that we can extend the kingdom of God. Well, once again, it's great to have you here. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. This is not about us. It's about you, Jesus. It's about the fulfillment of prophecy, the coming of Christ, to usher in the end of the ages. We are in the end of the ages. They began 2,000 years ago with your birth. They will end at your return. Therefore, we are in, and we see, Lord, all the tumult that sin brings, but in the middle of the tumult, we see peace, peace through Jesus. Calm our hearts today as we experience the peace of Christ in song and in spoken word. In your name we pray, amen. Our service continues with the reading of God's word. The first reading for this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the desert prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become level, and the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel is, comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came baptizing in the desert region, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message, After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We continue worshiping the Lord with our time of reflection. 
confession, and forgiveness. Let us turn to Emmanuel, our light and our day spring, seeking forgiveness for our wandering ways and our stubborn hearts. We need you to speak to us, O God, because we have gone our own way, forgotten your law and forgotten your love for us. We are in need of your deliverance from powers that have overtaken us. We are lost in need of rescue. We pause for a moment of silent confession. We speak together. Come, Lord Jesus, forgive us and restore us. Come, Lord Jesus, guide us and deliver us. Come, Lord Jesus, teach us and renew us. Come, Lord Jesus, make our hearts your home. Good news. Good news. Good news. God so loved the world that he gave sinful and broken humanity a gift. Emmanuel, God with us. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. This gift of mercy has restored our relationship with God. Thanks be to God for his abundant grace. Amen. We continue by praying together the wonderful prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. storm found no place at the keeper's door it was for this a child was born to save a world so cold and hollow a sleeping town they did not know that lying in a manger low a Mother holds 
holds the promise tight. Every wrong will be made right. The road is straight, the burdens light. For in His hands He holds tomorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there? Once again, welcome. We've been hearing wonderful music, scripture, in song. Holy Spirit fills our hearts through the gift of music mixed with the word. And now we speak the word and we pray that there will be peace flooding your hearts through these wonderful words of Isaiah. We pray, Lord, we thank you. 700 years before Jesus, you were born in a manger. Isaiah wrote these inspired words to comfort, to comfort us. Not just the Israelites in captivity, but us, captive by our sin. Remind us that we are released from our sin through Jesus. And give us the heart to repent daily, be obedient to the Word of God. And Jesus, not to be afraid, but to know that through Christ, our comfort overflows. Bless this time in your Word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One day back in January of 1988, I got a call from my brother Ken. Ken told me that his father-in-law, who was also my hometown pastor, had died in a car accident. Uh, pastor Bukup's wife, Joanne, called from St. Cloud one snowy, wintry day. Her husband, Pastor Bukup, was in Detroit Lakes, and uh, Joanne wanted to drive to Detroit Lakes, but she wasn't sure that it was safe to go. So she said, uh, could you uh, drive out of town and just see how the roads are a few miles out of town. So he said he would, and he drove out of town, and as he returned to come back, he was hit head-on by a truck, and he died. I remember that phone call 32 years ago. I remember those events like it was yesterday. I remember Joan sobbing on the phone. But what I didn't know until a few days ago was that when Ken and Joan, my brother and sister-in-law, got the news, Ken turned to Joan and said, let's have a devotion. And the devotion for the day was Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2, our Old Testament reading for today. Listen to this. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. I mean, that was a wonderful verse to have on that tragic day. Comfort, comfort, your sins are forgiven, but there's more to the story. When Ken and Joan told Joan's mom, Pastor Bukop's wife, uh, about the verse, she said that was Maurice, that was Pastor Bukop's name, that was his ordination verse. That meant that on the day he became a pastor, there's always a special worship service, and Pastor Bukup chose Isaiah 40, verses 1 and 2, as his ordination verse. Think of that. We'll never really know why God allowed that horrible, tragic accident. But it was almost as though this wasn't coincidental, that somehow 
Not only did Ken read Isaiah chapter 40, but it turned out to be Maurice Bukup's ordination verse. It was almost as though God was saying, yes, this is a horrible, horrible day. Death is never, ever God's will, but think of it. Be comforted. Maurice, you see, is one of my children. Maurice is finally home with me in heaven. Be comforted. You will see him again. Now go backward in time, 2,700 years. Why would God use those exact same words to comfort the people of Israel? Put it into context. The Israelites, the northern kingdom of Israel, had already been conquered by the Assyrians. Now the Babylonians were on the brink of attacking and invading the southern half of the kingdom. Think of this, Judah, beloved Jerusalem, and the gem of the city, the holy site, the holy temple, all under threat of attack and destruction. All the Israelites had to do was to repent. They didn't. God allowed the Babylonians to come in. They sacked the city, destroyed the city, destroyed the temple, and took thousands and thousands of Israelites away into captivity. If only they had listened to the warning. Now think of this. Isaiah chapters 1 to 39, as I told you last week, that's the first part of Isaiah. That's generally God condemning, God judging people for their sins. But now we begin this kinder, gentler message of hope through Messiah in chapter 40. And so God now speaks to these people. Where are they? They're in Babylonian uh, deportation, exile. He begins now to speak words of comfort and forgiveness. God has forgiven them, but notice he speaks in the present tense. He says, your sins are forgiven. Your hard labor is completed. He's almost saying to them, listen, uh, even though you're not there, you are there because I'm promising that one day you'll return. It took 70 years, but one day they returned to Jerusalem and began to rebuild their city and their temple. What great words of comfort these people. What if you were in prison and God sent a prophet to you to say it's going to be okay. One day you're going to get out. Would you, would you hold on to that? They did. They held on to it for 70 years. Think about that. This is great comfort for us today. Whatever hardship you have, God is here to say. God is with you. Through Messiah, the one uh, prophet said of uh, by the prophet Isaiah, God is with you. Even though you may not understand what happened, it could be a tragic accident, you'll never know why God allowed that. Or maybe you will know. Because something that's happened is a result of your sin. Either way, Jesus said that through faith in Him, you are forgiven. Jesus is with you. That's the message of Isaiah. And His name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. That is the foundational tenet of Christianity, that you are not alone in this world. Whatever you do, it's not your strength, it's the strength of Jesus in you. You're not alone. Open your eyes and see Jesus with you. Let's go on to verse 3. Listen to what God says through Isaiah. He said, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make his path straight. So put these three verses together. They're simple. They're short. Yes, God forgives you. He comforts you. He forgives you through the blood of Messiah, Jesus, born in the manger, died on the cross and risen from the dead. But now as forgiven people, he expects you to prepare the way, prepare your heart for the coming of Jesus. They were looking forward to Jesus who would come in 700 years. We look back to Christ who already came and to the one who's coming again. So every day when I get up, God still expects me to prepare my heart, to prepare my heart today for the coming of Jesus. When I got to the office this morning, I prayed. I prayed for our confirmation day. I prayed for this videotaping. Prepare my heart, Lord Jesus. Uh, prepare our, our church, prepare our school for this day. As forgiven children, we're to prepare our heart every day for the coming of Jesus. How? Through repentance, through obedience, through faith. What did Jesus say? Look on the big screen. He said, whoever loves me will do what? Keep my commandments. Many people in modern-day Christendom today, they divorce repentance and obedience from faith and comfort. You cannot divorce the two. God says they are one. Repent and believe the good news. Comfort comes through faith in Christ, which overflows in your life 
of repentance and obedience. Let's talk about the word comfort for a minute. We have a lot of things that people do to be comforted. A while back, I saw a list of the top 25 comfort foods. What do you think the number one comfort food was on there? Pizza's number five. Number one for you is pizza. Number one is grilled cheese. And number two, mashed potatoes, maybe. Number three, mac and cheese. Number four, tacos. Number five, pizza. Making you hungry? I'm sure you have your own list. What about comfort mattresses? Look at that one on the big screen. Listen to this. The Serta Eye Comfort Blue Max 5000 Elite Luxury Foam Gel Memory Foam King Mattress Set. Yours for only $3,795. You know what? A lot of these things do bring us comfort, don't they? I mean, we bought a new king size bed about a year ago. It's got a great mattress. It's way more comfortable than it was. My wife's a great cook. She knows how to cook comfort foods. Some of these things are good things to comfort. We need that in this pandemic, amen? Go ahead, comfort yourself. But when those things become the way that we comfort without the comfort that God gives us, then now we've been veered off the, the main uh, power source for our comfort. You see, we have to realize that our main, uh, um, the main enemy of our comfort is sin, and the cure for our, comfort, for our sin is the cross and the empty tomb. You put those two together and Jesus said, this is how you shall be comforted. Repent and believe the good news. So our comfort always focuses first and foremost on Christ. That's why we start the day with prayer. In the van on the way to school, our girls pray in the van. That doesn't mean that the whole day is going to be good, but we have to center ourselves on Jesus Look what happened a few hundred years later after Isaiah. Here comes John the Baptist. Mark 1, 4. John came preaching a baptism of what? Repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Again, what did John do? He coupled repentance and forgiveness together just like Isaiah did and just like Jesus does. Look what Jesus said on the day of his resurrection. What should be the a message of the church today. He said to his disciples on the day of his resurrection that repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name, talking about himself, to all nations. There again, it's the dual message of repentance and forgiveness. So preach it. Preach it, Redeemer. Preach it, preacher. Yes, speak God's word with love and overflow people with God's forgiveness for those who repent. Jesus brings comfort. That's the message today. The Apostle Paul clung to that in his life. This was a man who was so close to the point of death so many times. Listen to what he says in 2 Corinthians 1. He said, just as the sufferings of Christ now overflow into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. So mark that word. Memorize it. Through Christ our comfort overflows. Whatever hardship I'm experiencing, through Christ my comfort overflows. Paul was talking, of course, about his persecution, but whatever you are discomforted by today, be comforted. In the last few weeks, I've been receiving phone calls from members and others, and I'm seeing now what the experts have predicted for months, that we're getting into now this COVID winter, and people are beginning to become uh, more and more in a state of despair because of the isolation that they're having, and uh, some are unemployed, and this is bringing people, some people, to the brink. Find comfort in Christ. Through Christ, my comfort overflows. Say it again. Through Christ, my comfort overflows. Look on the big screen. There's a picture here. She is a 33-year-old woman. Her name is Jennifer. Jennifer is serving the last of uh, two years of a five-year sentence uh, in prison at the Women's Shakopee Prison. You know, she's been away from her son since her son was 11 years old. Listen to what she said. When I first came to Shakopee, I was so devastated at what I had done to my son's life that I could not forgive myself. I did not eat. I dropped 25 pounds, and I thought my son would never forgive me. A month after coming to prison... I enrolled in the Prison Fellowship Academy, and slowly things started to change for my son and me. He started to hear a difference in my voice, a hope and a future. 
Through prison fellowship, I learned to forgive. I learned who I am in Jesus Christ and what He did for me. This newfound forgiveness started to change me in every way. My son was able to see and hear this, which brought him a lot of hope. So what began Jennifer's change of life? Jennifer began to see her life in Christ. She began to be be able to forgive herself because she knew that Jesus forgave her. And Jesus had a whole new life opened for her. Why? Because she knew that in Christ, her comfort overflows. Isaiah would say to you, John would say to you, Jesus would say to you today, in Christ, your comfort overflows. God's peace to be with you as you hear the word of God and keep it, and that you take that comfort and share it with others. Amen? Amen. One of the hardest things to do in our lives is to just wait. That's what Advent is about as we prepare for Christmas. It's also what our lives are about during this time of a pandemic. We find ourselves waiting often. What we want to wait for is to hear God speaking to us, holding us and guiding us. We wait. We continue by going to the throne of grace through Jesus Christ in prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you gave us your holy word, words that we can cling to, words that your people of faith have clung to for thousands of years. 2,700 years ago, Isaiah wrote that beautiful words, comfort, comfort my people, speak tenderly to them. Your sins are forgiven. He was speaking of the coming of the Messiah. Just two verses later, 
The voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight his paths. Not only did John call for repentance, but he called for faith in the coming of the Messiah. Lord, forgive us for looking for ultimate comfort anywhere but you, Jesus. We call upon you today. We need you. We pray that we would put all of our hope in you, Jesus. We need you. Comfort us, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time of Advent that gives us special hope in this time of special darkness where the days are getting shorter and shorter. We wake up in the dark and oftentimes we come home in the dark. But Jesus, you are the light of the world. Help us, Lord, to repent every day of our sins and to continue to prepare our hearts, even if we are believers already, to be obedient to the Word of God because whoever loves Jesus will keep His commands. We pray today, Lord, we struggle with our disobedience. Forgive us, Jesus. Lord, in Your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we pray for our world. We pray, Lord, for our President Donald J. Trump and for our President-elect Joe Biden. We pray, dear Jesus, for harmony and unity as much as possible in our country. We pray that, Lord, those who are elected will provide a stable, peaceful environment, an environment of freedom so that we are free to believe in Jesus and free to preach Christ. And those who are free, help us, Lord, to be bold. We pray, dear Jesus, that you would bless this live streaming project. Thank you for the donations that have come in. Help us to use these donations wisely so that more and more people can hear the good news of Jesus. We pray for the, the waterfall project, the, the stained glass windows, but most of all that we would use everything we have, whatever they are, to extend the kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we pray for those who continue to suffer the effects of the pandemic. For those who are sick, may your healing power flow upon them. For those who have died, may their loved ones find comfort in the cross and the empty tomb and the resurrection of the dead. And for those in the front line, may the vaccine come to them soon. And for those in the uh, extended care, may they be, uh, come vaccinated soon. And we pray for this vaccine that it would be widely distributed. But Lord, remind us that there's something more important, more powerful than a vaccine. It's the Word of God that, that protects us against our, the judgment of God that shows us in our heart that Jesus died, Jesus rose, Jesus ascended, Jesus is coming. And those who hold on to His robes in faith have peace, forgiveness, eternal life. Help us not to be afraid of this life and not to be afraid of death and not to be afraid of judgment because Jesus, You are the one who opens the seals on the scroll. You hold history in your hand. We love you, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our comfort, our peace. Amen. Some of you cannot be present physically to receive communion. Uh, today we then are going to take you spiritually to that table. You're going to sit next to Jesus. Close your eyes if you like. Hear the words. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. is coming. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.